Hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome to beautiful, snowy Austria. Uh, if you didn't see my last video, I drove here in my new 911 GT3. Kind of main purpose of the trip was to run that car in and to do 1500 kilometers in it before I could really start to fully exploit its capabilities. There was another reason for the trip, or maybe a reason as to why I came here, to Austria. It's because today I'm getting the opportunity to get behind the wheel of the new Porsche 911 Dakar, a car that I am super intrigued by. Uh, Porsche actually unveiled it last year in LA whilst Tony and I were there promoting our podcast Behind the Glass. I kind of got overexcited when I checked it out then and I'm still excited today, but I did ask the question in the video that I made last year of, well, who on earth is actually going to use the Dakar? I love it, but I'm a bit of a niche weirdo and I like odd, strange cars and I use cars in ways that not everyone does. I don't think there are many other people that would want to take a 911 up a mountain or through the Australian outback or down to Patagonia. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, maybe there are quite a few more people than that. Well, Porsche are clearly hoping there are because they're going to try and make two and a half thousand of these cars. I say try and make, it's Porsche, they'll sell, I mean they're probably all sold out, aren't they? because collectors and stuff. But anyway, let's not get into that. That's a whole nother conversation, maybe for the podcast. Today, I'm just gonna indulge in my excitement. Get behind the wheel and find out whether this car can live up to the kind of expectations or hopes that I have for it, or whether actually, maybe it's just a bit of Instagram fodder, a bit of a sort of collector special that we may never actually see being used to its fullest potential. We'll find out, and I think we're gonna find out real fast, because I'm fairly sure I'm gonna be going out for an ice driving experience is the very first thing I do with it. It's gonna be a mad day, stay tuned. Just quickly before I crack on with this 911 Dakar experience, let me remind you about my sponsor for this trip, Car Vertical. Uh, without Car Vertical, I wouldn't be able to stay at that awesome hotel in Munich on my way down here in my GT3, but I also wouldn't be able to change my plans super last minute and reroute myself here to Austria to drive the Dakar. So yes, huge thanks to them. Uh, car Vertical essentially help you avoid costly problems when buying a car. All you have to do is enter the details of a car into their website and you get back a super detailed and concise report on that car's full history, including the mileage history presented in this super easy to analyze graph, meaning you can avoid mileage scams. But they also compile information from I think over 900 different global sources, meaning that you can check whether the cars have ever been stolen or in an accident or had major damage. The reports go on forever. It's so impressive. I got sent over a couple of examples from Car Vertical and I just kept scrolling and it was all this super useful information. I don't know how I ever bought a car previously without getting a report done by Car Vertical. Uh, they're offering you 10% off a report if you use my code seen through glass. A link is in the description. Let's say in the future you're considering buying a used 911 Dakar or get a report done via car vertical just to make sure that I didn't plow one into a snowbank during a press trip and that's the one you're thinking of buying. Yes, huge thanks once again to car vertical. Go and check them out. But for now, let's go find a 911 Dakar. Now, in case you didn't know, or perhaps you'd forgotten, the 911 Dakar is essentially a lifted four-wheel drive 911 GTS. Uh, it's heavily inspired by Porsche's pretty impressive rallying heritage, which includes the 1984 Paris Dakar winner, the 953. Now, the Dakar sits 50 mil higher than a standard 911 and can rise up to 80 mil higher in its off-road mode. Now, whilst it is a bit of a part spin, this thing is theoretically super capable. Porsche actually started developing it 10 years ago with the 991 generation 911. They've changed things like the front and rear bumpers for better approach and departure angles, added underside protection, moved air intakes, etc. Meaning that in some situations, like the breakover angle for example, it's as capable as a Cayenne. So to sum up, it's a 911 that's been inspired by some of the most iconic off-road Porsches of all time that should be able to take you as many places as Porsche's best SUV. I think you can understand why I'm excited. But the question is, is it fun to drive? Let's go find out. Rightio then, here we go. I've ended up in the rough roads. 911 Dakar. This is the full rally design package with the livery that kind of uh, harks back to the Paris Dakar car, which obviously had the Rothmans livery, but Porsche aren't allowed to do a Rothmans livery, so they've called it Rough Roads. But this is this is as legit as it gets when it comes to this new 911 Dakar. Um, trying to get myself familiar with it. It's quite weird stepping out of my GT3 into this, but um, 
there we go. Power on. PDK only for 911 Dakar. No manual. Everybody ready? Everybody ready, yes. Everybody ready. Now, our group is being led by Jörg Bergmeister, which is quite outrageous. Right. The other group is being led by Walter Roll. A tiny sure. bit jealous, but... Now, Jörg's going to be talking to us on the walkie-talkie during this, which, uh, well, it's helpful for me, might slightly interfere with some of my pieces to camera. So, yeah, if I suddenly get distracted or you hear him babbling on, go with it. How cool does this look? Look at this first scene. That all-black Dakar's amazing, but then following these cars look fantastic. I said it in the intro, maybe they're just Instagram fodder, but actually, just based on the briefing we had, there's a lot more that's gone into this car than I realised at the night at the LA launch. So, uh, <laughs> based on visuals alone, I am loving this experience so far. Now, last year I did actually do the Porsche driving experience up in I think it's Finland. Spent a lot of time drifting the four-wheel drive cars and things like that. So, fingers crossed, I'm going to know what I'm doing. But hold on a sec, I'm trying to find my way around this car first. There we go, into sport oh, mode. Try to keep the pilot. They said, um, oh my god, it's so much more, so much more dynamic in the sport mode. But yeah, they said that actually out here, we're not going to be using rally or off-road, which are the two new driver modes for the Dakar. You just want to be in sport. There we go. Woo -hoo -hoo. A bit of four-wheel drive drifting. I think we're trying to do a bit of sort of emergency braking action here. Going, going, going. Now a little too early. Even Which more aggressive. Maybe no one really understood. Especially not me, so we'll give this a go now. And go. We're doing this is basically a bit of an emergency braking test, right? Basically. So braking and turning so you see the friction circle of the tires um, and what the car is capable of even on those conditions. Good from Jörg. Woohoohoo! Oh yes! <laughs> How do I become a rally champion? Yes. Help me. It's really <laughs> helpful if you want that the car is turning in, lift off the throttle. Okay, so then, then, as I turn the lift off, let the car move? Then, then it's, okay. It's a big help. Okay, I'll try. Thank you. <laughs> ah, there we go. Woo! Too much. I lifted off too much. Took Walter's advice. Too much to heart there. Off again. Whoa. <laughs> I've now gone around in circles six times. I think I just clipped the edge of the track there. <laughs> Got a bit cocky. <laughs> oh, I could do this all day, every day. And they just look the bomb. Okay, danke. So cool they bought the uh the classic rally cars here. It's an amazing event, this. What is, how is this my job? I mean, I ask that on a daily basis, but today I'm asking it more than ever. It's just, it's just spectacular, beautiful weather, snow, 
classic 911 rally cars, new 911 Dakars. Uh, you wouldn't have known it, but at the end there, I was actually chasing Walter Roll. He was in the other Rough Roads liveried Dakar. I mean, I say chasing because I was genuinely chasing. He was like, okay, follow me. He was gone after two corners. I was like, try and Walter. Stop being a rally champion. Um, but yeah, an absolute blast. I think I said it in the car, but I asked, you know, how much different an experience would we have had if we were in standard 911 GTSs just now instead of the Dakars? And truth be told, probably not that different an experience. A lot of that performance was, was the Pirelli winter tyres, but it's, it's not what Dakar's all about. It's the fact that if I wanted to, I could launch it up there. It's not just about going ice driving, it's about going up a mountain. It's, it's, the, it's the potential, the possibilities, the capabilities. You're not always going to be exploiting everything that that car is capable of. It's still, at base, still a great 911 that I guess you can use in lots of different circumstances. We're going to find that out soon. It's the fact that if you wanted to, you could see a ski slope or a rocky path or I don't even know what, just, just launch along it. It opens up the world to being in a Porsche 911. I mean, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know about Drive the World 2019 did a big trip around the world in a Carrera T. The Dakar would open up Drive the World 2.0 to the parts of the world I couldn't get to. South America, Patagonia, parts of Africa. Oh, endless possibilities. Anyway, for now, I'm gonna stop getting so excited. Sit here, enjoy this clean mountain air and, and sip on my coffee. Porsche life is good life. Right, it is now time to leave the ice track. And for me, this is where the more interesting part of this test drive begins. Oh, Sally Satnav's chatting at me, let's turn her off. Um, because at its base, at its core, this is a 911 GTS, a, a jacked up 911 GTS. As I mentioned, a car that is capable of going up there, going and doing cool things. But it's also got to be able to do this, the normal stuff. And being 50 mils higher than a standard 911, is it going to feel a bit weird and floaty out here on the road? Is it going to lose its edge when you're just doing the normal stuff? By the way, this one sounds like crazy throaty. Hold on a sec. It's got a weird gargle going on. I'll figure that out. Uh, I've got an hour and a half to drive back to, uh, to my hotel for the evening. And yeah, I'm just going to try and throw this thing around a bit and, and see. See what it's like when it's not going sideways on an ice track or rock climbing or driving through Namibia or, you know, that kind of stuff. So yeah, let's crack on and learn a bit more about this Dakar. of a motorway or auto route to do is the first part of this uh, pre-programmed route back to the hotel that Porsche have put in the sat nav so whilst I'm just cruising let me talk to you about something which I think is a negative about this car because I realize I've been a bit of an overexcited schoolboy so far and just talked about all the positives but yeah but negatives well, really it's, it's this interior so I think it's crap why well, is this boring is it boring I mean like literally there's nothing special about it <laughs> they've made the outside of this car and elements of the driving dynamics so unique and different and exciting. You step in here and you're like, oh, I could literally be in any other 911 with a lightweight package, a GT car or, or a GTS. This is a GTS with the lightweight package. You don't have to have the roll cage. You can't have rear seats in a Dakar because the pump to increase the ride height for the rear wheels is where the rear seats used to be. So this is strictly a two-seater. Because Porsche hope that Dakar customers are gonna go well, seriously off-roading, they suggest or recommend the buckets to kind of keep you in place, but if you've watched any of my recent GT3 content, you'll know how I feel about the buckets. I, I don't want them. But moreover than that, the thing that really annoys me is that you can't have any colours, you, you can't do anything, it's just black and race techs. Ugh! If you look at the Sport Classic, another sort of special 911 project that Porsche have released recently, it's got a beautiful interior which harks back to its heritage and history. This car is all about celebrating heritage and history, the 1980s rallying scene for Porsche. And then you step in here and you're like, oh, I don't get any of that. I really don't, apart from the rubber floor mats and the big old Dakar badge over there. I mean, it's, it's really a letdown. So there's not really much you can do about that, apart from, I guess, going to D-Class, the people who <laughs> installed the Pasha into my seat and yeah, get a custom retrim. But yeah, I, I would be really disappointed if I bought one of these cars 
that I had to live with this interior considering how special it is from the outside and how theoretically unique it is. Aside from that, the only thing which I've picked up on from my very brief drive to this point, the car's a little bit more aggy than I sort of thought it was going to be. It's got a bit of an edge to it. I don't know if it's because of the lightweight glass, the no rear seats, you know, the weight reduction they've done. It's just got a bit of, a bit of ca character and personality. It's not subdued. It almost makes me feel like I'm in a 1980s rally car. Okay, way more refined, but it's definitely got an edge. Oh, there's a, there's a tunnel coming up. Right. So I'm in rally mode at the moment. We'll get into the, the driving mode in a second. But the sports exhaust is on. Manual. Let's see. This is the turbo engine. It must sound different outside to inside. So that was less impressive than I was hoping. In here, it sounds great. a bizarro route that Porsche have chosen back to the hotel. I'm I'm following the sat nav blindly, which maybe I shouldn't have done, but we're limited on time. You've probably noticed that it started to get dark. We actually didn't start the ice driving experience until around 1 p.m. It's now coming up to five and yeah, short days this time of the year. So I'm just gonna have to roll with it and fingers crossed at some point the road gets better and the traffic clears. I mean, I really shouldn't complain, by the way. I'm driving a 911 Dakar for free, but I just wanted to be on some beautiful Austrian mountain road where I could really experiment with this thing, but I'm just not sure it's going to happen. Uh, anyway, let me talk to you about driving modes because that is different. The interior might not be, but, but, but that is different for this car. We've got two new driving modes, uh, four in total, normal, sport, rally and off-road. Normal and sport, as you would expect, the same as any other 911. I'm actually just going to slow down and drop back from that golf because it does look like this road might actually get quite good. I should probably zip up my camera back. <laughs> um, rally and off-road though, yeah, all new. So rally supposedly is for fun driving on loose surfaces. Think of gravel, muddy forests, you know, that kind of thing. Actually sends a lot of the power to the rear wheels, keeps the ride height at that sort of standard 50 mil, and yeah, it's about having a laugh. Off-road is when you go up to the, the 80 mil, you add 30 mils of ground clearance, and actually it's more about rock crawling and sand or dune surfing, you know, real boggy kind of stuff. So let's go into rally, because, oh, there is a wet mode as well, by the way. Uh, let's go into rally just to see what happens. Um, and find out when we start pushing on in this GTS with increased ride height what starts to happen. I have to say so far the ride height hasn't made a huge difference to my experience. It's not like it's really slushy. I do feel like it's a little bit more play but it's not like I'm suddenly in a Range Rover. I've still got all the confidence to push on into the corners. This is really not the road to be doing this in. And I wasn't prepared for it. I've got camera gear flying everywhere, but I guess can't be choosers. Let's take what we can get. So yeah, I mean, this is still really good. This is still a 911 and a, and a, and a really quick 911. And I say, I'm not nervous heading into these corners. It's a blast. And then, and then we go up to off-road. And the vehicle is rising. Now, there's absolutely no need to be in off-road on this road. <laughs> um, and I don't think you would use off-road mode really very often, but we might as well because we're here. Now, this does limit our top speed. Um, I do suddenly feel quite a bit higher, I have to say. Even though I'm in this bucket seat, I, I, I do feel like I'm high up off the ground, but the ride quality and ride sensation isn't hugely different still got a sporty firmness to it just because we've got more travel as I say it's not Range Rover squishy still got a firmness to the ride but yeah I mean I'm not gonna learn anything about off-road mode right now following a golf on a slightly dark and twisty Austrian road what I do quite like though is if I come back to rally is that I can well I can seemingly raise or lower the ride height of the vehicle at any speed. I did it at 100 kilometers an hour there. Like when I was on the motorway or the auto route, just going up and down and up and down. 
I think that's good because in my GT3, for example, it's only certain speeds that I can do the front lift. I'm sure that's because of aerodynamic balance and stuff, because we're raising the whole vehicle. It uh, probably doesn't disturb things as much, but you know, there we go. Just putting it down, lowering the vehicle. And, and that and is good if you're really off-roading and suddenly you see a big hole, I suppose. <laughs> Don't know how long it takes, the whole process. It seems to take a while. But um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a funny one because out here on these roads, okay, not necessarily the best roads ever, not the best driving conditions, it's still a really nice 911. I don't feel like it's lost much. Okay, in the summer, put me on one of the French Alp twisties. Would I struggle to keep up with a GTS or other sports cars? I don't know. I can't believe that I would. I just like the fact I keep looking out there and seeing these huge flared wheel arches. More positivity, I'm afraid. <laughs> Sorry, haters. I still like this thing. Well, back at the hotel, my time with the Dakar is now over. And I've been trying to think about how to sort of sum up my experience or sum up my thoughts on that car now that I've actually driven it. I think unless you're gonna use it as it's intended to be used, just get the GTS. You're gonna save yourself 50 grand, you'll be a little bit lighter, 10 kilos or so, depending on spec, a little bit faster, 0.1 seconds quicker to 0 to 60. But at least you can have rear seats, you can have a colorful interior, etc., etc. But if you have an adventurous side, if you've got lots of cars and you're looking for one more for the kind of quirky occasion like heading up to the ski slopes or going to your mate's off-road event or you just want to get out there and live life to the fullest but in a sports car and in a Porsche to celebrate kind of rally heritage it's, it's, it's brilliant it's I, I don't think it's that compromised in any area even though it is compromised as a car does that make sense it, I just kind of adore it for existing and I really don't want to knock Porsche I don't want to knock any manufacturer even Lamborghini with that Storato I don't want to stop them from making these wacky, silly cars, even if maybe no one needs it or actually wants it. So I, as I said at the beginning, I don't really know who's going to get a Dakar and actually go out there and, and use it. Because I think if you bought it speculatively, you'll drive it and you'll go, let's get a GTS. Like, do you know what I mean? like you've got to really exploit all of that goodness. Ten years Porsche took to develop the Dakar. Tens of thousands of miles of testing. It's really a proper thing. And so therefore, unless you're gonna use it as a proper thing, just don't use it, don't, don't get it. <laughs> I want one, but I wouldn't swap the GT3 for one. And it's as compromised as the GT3. So yeah, I'd have to be rich. There's no way to install back seats into a Dakar. There are a few ways to install back seats into a GT3, so that would be the keeper. Anyway, as I say, an amazing, amazing day. One I won't forget anytime soon.